Hey guys, welcome to SS8000 Cars and today we have the Porsche Macan. Now I know some of you are going to say, but hang on a second, you had a Porsche Macan Turbo a couple of years ago and why are we re-looking at the Macan? Especially because the new facelifted Macan is due out middle of next year or at least will land on our shores middle of next year. Really this is an impromptu video because I was lent this today because mine's in the, the service and I thought it was worthy of a, a video because it's at the complete other end of the spectrum in terms of I had the Porsche Macan Turbo and this is the Porsche Macan, not even the Macan S. Now it is a petrol, it's a four cylinder two litre producing 244 HP. Top speed of around 140-ish 0-60 so it really isn't the fastest of all the Macans. The entry level price around 50 grand, think a little less. Compare that with the the turbo, the top end turbo before extras, £100,000. So you literally could have two of these for the top end turbo. Now my, my turbo wasn't the one with the performance pack so probably would come in at about um, early 80s. How has it changed in the, the four to five years of production? Well, the ranges stay pretty much the same. So as far as petrol is concerned, it's been the entry level, which is a two litre, the next level, which is the Macan S, which is a uh, 2.9 litre V6. You then have the turbo petrol, which is a 2.9 twin turbo, producing about 390 brake horse. Were you to go with the uh, performance pack it adds another 20-25 grand to the to the total package. The styling hasn't changed at all. You can probably see there are different packages you can get for the car. Um, I believe this has the sports design package which actually has the lights into the bumper here. Slightly deeper front splitter but really in essence it's very similar to the the Macan turbo that we had it's in metallic black jet metallic black and it's running 20 inch alloys as opposed to the 21 inch we had seems to be slightly more raised suspension wise than the the Macan turbo we had but it's a pretty well specced car looks to have the the full LED lighting system, panoramic sunroof which is easier to see from the inside and if you come round to the, the rear of the car again really it's very similar you have a, a rear diffuser and quad tailpipes to two on either side it's very similar to the way that ours was coming into the car we have the updated sat nav system so that's exactly the same as i have in my gt3 and again some of the options that i had on the turbo like the sports exhaust system are absent from this car and i had the uh, 18 way adjustable sports seats which Clearly this car hasn't, they look like they're 14-way adjustable, um, but they have memory seats, which is always quite important in this type of car. Otherwise, very similar inside, we have the black piano wood here, which in our Macan we actually had the aluminium on the fascia and on the doors. This one does not have the extra leather pack, which would provide leather on the doors with the stitching, but it does have a leather dash which is quite nice and you can see that the stitching is just just adds a touch of luxury the seats are very comfortable despite not being the the top level seats and this is in the position that's comfortable for me now the the dash itself is exactly the same as our gt4 was so you have the three dials which has the rev counter in the center in this case of course it's a pdk which is a their twin clutch system. Quite a young one this, it's an 18 reg car so it can 
only have been registered after the 1st of March and inside in the same way as we had before there's a decent amount of leg room however what I would like to show you is me sitting beside behind me so what we have here is the front seats comfort there's not a huge amount of room so I think fine for two six footers but if you had a six foot four and a six footer you'd be um, pushed to uh, to sit in this and also if I can ask Cara to get in beside me there's I'll... not a huge amount of room in the middle so I think three of you across the the bench rear seat would be a bit of a struggle otherwise you can see that it's got the the panoramic sunroof and unlike my Panamera it really is panoramic it comes all the way back and it opens up almost the full length of the front section whereas in the Panamera it only comes halfway back very nicely finished though I mean the Porsches they know how to to build cars Porsche I had almost forgotten that of course to open the boot the boot button is beneath the wiper so hey presto the boot opens and it's a it is a big boot I'm not I sometimes wonder with the McCann whether or not the boot the space in the rear has just been slightly sacrificed when you're crossing the continents of Europe you have enough space for four of you to at least last a week I would say under here again no no space saver so what we have in this car is presumably the same as they provide in all Porsches now which is a little squeezy VW bottle almost impossible to get into the tyre as we discovered with our GT3 not impossible difficult this one has the rear tinted lights I don't know whether that's standard now on the car um, ours didn't have that it's a very compact compact SUV really this and I think because it's compact you really you really do have to put up with the fact that there's not so much room in the rear come round to the engine I always liked the way actually that these the lights stayed still and there was a space for um, fitting over the lights in, in the bonnet itself quite a big bonnet I like the bonnet again very difficult this is very very similar to the uh, to the the last McCann the the engine is not as far back under the into the bulkhead as I would have expected but that was always the case I'd like to correct myself if I may I can't remember whether I said that the twin turbo top model uh, McCann runs a 3.6 v6 twin turbo I think I might have said it was a 2.9, so apologies for that. Um, this one, however, is a 2 litre. Quite a lot of room around it. I guess that's because it's not as big as its uh, six cylinder siblings. Nicely finished, though. So I think what we'll do is we'll just take it for a run, if that's all right, and I'll, I'll let you know what I think of it as a driver's machine. Hey guys, welcome to the inside of the basic McCann. Now you can see it's very similar to the McCann we had, which was a 64 plate. So we're going back um, four years here and my one wasn't at the beginning. So the car's been in production for five plus years, I suspect. Um, the real, the really the only change has been a slightly updated navigation um, screen. However, the new version which is coming out middle of next year so the 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 revamped version is going to have a uh, i think a 10.3 inch wide screen similar to the panamera and the new kn this is pretty much the same as i have in the gt3 you turn the engine on and off using a key whereas in the uh, both the new KN and the Panamera you don't have a key the key is fixed you have to have the key on you but other than that everything opens up for you 
So it's more analog this car than the newer versions that have been introduced by Porsche over the last few years. First thing I'd say is it sounds like a four-cylinder engine. Now I seem to remember that when they introduced the McCann range was it a four-cylinder engine they started off with the base level? Maybe it was. Maybe this has always been a four-cylinder engine but it's not as nice as the six. It doesn't make the nicest of noises on startup. Now this one doesn't have the sports exhaust so it's a bit quieter than our turbo would have been but still you know it lacks a little bit of theater which I think is always important in any any Porsche when you when you fire it up so we pull ourselves into drive we'll take the car for a little bit of a, a run now the first thing is the seats are hugely supportive for for the base level car I mean, they're really comfy. I, I can't think that the the turbo seats were in any way uncomfortable, but I doubt whether they were more comfortable than this. These are really, really nice. I really do feel that the the suspension on this is softer sprung than it was in the turbo. Rides the bumps very well, and if I put the the window up. It's quite civilised now, we're only doing 26 miles an hour, but um, it's riding the speed humps with aplomb. I like the drivability of the car, it, it feels really nice. Um, I assume that it's a little bit more sporty if we put it in sport. It feels that the gears are being just a little bit lazy at the moment in terms of changing up too early for my liking, but I think that's probably because we don't have it in in sport. Doesn't appear to have the multi adjustable dampers that we had in the in the turbo. So you had sport and sport plus. I can't see a sport plus in this. So it's presumably just a sport. So if we do that now, we're now in, it immediately dropped a gear. Yeah bit of pickup, engine's quite vocal, but it doesn't have the throb of the of the of the six cylinder engine. You know this doesn't feel quite as um, purposeful. In fact actually it, it feels a long way short of of the um, of the turbo. We're in sport. done quite a bit of, uh, of driving of the car now so how would I, I sum it up um, I suppose by saying that it's not as quick as I'd like and I think I mentioned that earlier the even in sport the four-cylinder engine labors there's no question of that I mean the figures suggest 6.7 to 60 which does seem quick but it's a very smooth and comfortable leisurely 6.6 .6 to 60. Uh, it, it doesn't, you know, it, for a big car it doesn't pick up its skirts if you'll excuse the expression and really go for it. It sort of, sort of brings on speed incrementally and you do get up to speed but it just, it's just not a, um, an exciting process. Other than that I really like it. It's, um, it's beautifully put together, it steers nicely, it handles well, um, really comfortable to sit in as I mentioned, uh, seats are wonderful, uh, lots of room, minor reservation about the room in the rear but it never bothered me when I had my McCann and the, the dimensions on the cars are absolutely identical. The new one, is it worth waiting for the new one? Well. I certainly, if I was choosing this, would go for the Macan S that produces over 300 brake horsepower, six cylinder engine. I would think it would transform the car. It's going to have a much more modern MMI interface to, to this one, which is starting to look a bit old fashioned. New front and rear, rear bumpers on the, on the new car. Um, but to the uneducated eye, 
I think if you saw one after the other, you'd think they were the same car. That's my reading. Although I've not seen the new one in the flesh, only, only in pictures. Would I recommend buying one? Absolutely. I think the Macan is a great car. Only proviso is get yourself a six cylinder. Six cylinder won't be quite so economical, but um, you'll have more fun with it because it, uh, it'll give you, you know, that, that, that shove that I think this car absolutely deserves. Because I, I, I really think it is the best handling SUV on the market today. All right, thanks guys. It's Ian from SS8000 Cars signing off. See you next time.